I'm a big fan of the Nike Pegasus, and I have been for years. It's a shoe that I've always depended on, at least for the past five or six years. It's probably, next to the Vaporfly, the shoe I spend most of my running time in on any given year. In fact, for 2023, I think I was the only YouTuber that put the Pegasus 40 in my top 10 shoes of the year. It was number five. That's how much I love the peg. So I follow all of the leaks and the news for the next generation of the peg um, as closely as I possibly can. And I have for a long time because I think the Pegasus is probably Nike running's most important shoe. And I made a video about that. I'll link in the description if you want to know more about that. But I'm going to say with the Pegasus 41, this is going to be the first year that I have some concerns, some reservations about what Nike's doing with the Pegasus. I'm still going to cover it. I'm still going to run in it. But I have some concerns and some worries about this shoe. And I hope that I'm wrong. But if I'm not, mm, that means the Pegasus may be changing, not for the good. As I said, I follow the leaks very closely for the Pegasus. And the leaks for the Peg 41 started, I would say, the first ones I remember seeing were probably about the end of August 2023. Definitely by early September 2023, we were seeing fairly regular and clear photos of uh, what the Pegasus 41 was going to be. Now, with prototypes, um, they're prototypes. They're for development. They're going to change. But the thing with Nike running prototypes is by the time we see them, they're kind of almost there. There might be some minor tweaks in the upper and some of the styling and cosmetics, but the shoes are, are pretty much there. And I would say by uh, around October, we began to see what became known as really the Pegasus 41 prototype. And here it is. This is the Pegasus prototype that we began to see by the end of October, really all the way through the end of March 2024, we saw this shoe. Now, you can see that there's some significant differences between this shoe and the Pegasus 41 that was actually announced on April 11th at Nike's On Air event. Now, I know this is a real prototype because we saw it multiple times. We saw it in Elliot Kipchoge's feet. We saw it all over the place. Additionally, if you look at the design language of it, here is the Pegasus 41 prototype compared to the Winflow 11. You can see, um, you know, very much similarities in the design language here. And in fact, if you look at the white colorway of both the prototype and the Winflow 11, which came out in 2024, you can really see the design connection between these two shoes. Additionally, if you look at the recently released Pegasus Trail 5 that literally just came out a few days ago, you can see the exact same midsole uh, silhouette and lines between these two shoes. However, the Pegasus 41 that was announced at Nike's On Air event on April 11th had a very different midsole. Now, what's interesting though, is that some of the details are the same between these two shoes. If you look at the upper, the uppers are nearly identical. There's a few minor differences between them. And the medial side, the inner side of the shoe, including the midsole, are almost identical as well, though the sculpting of the sidewalls of the midsole are still different in the PEG 41. Now, we didn't begin to see this actual released Pegasus 41 shoe with this midsole until I would say April 1st. In fact, I think the first time I saw it was April 1st, and I thought it was an April Fool's joke because it was April 1st. And it's not uncommon for a prototype to change even fairly drastically through the development process, but it is a bit uncommon for it to change this drastically this late in the process, especially since we never saw this new Pegasus 41 midsole anywhere in the prototyping phase. I will admit that when I saw the sidewall sculpting of the Pegasus 41 prototype, I was concerned about that because it looked very similar to the sidewalls that we saw on the Infinity Run 4 last year and the Vomero 17 last year. Most specifically to the Infinity Run 4, where it had that sculpted, almost concave going into the midsole uh, sidewall. The Vomero 17 has a little bit less of it, but still a, a similar design. And that was extremely unstable. 
uh, and extremely unpleasant to run in if you supinated, if you rolled outward when you landed, because it would encourage you to continue rolling outward with your foot, which was not great. So with this update to the midsole design and the sculpting of the sidewall, as you can see here with these two compared, you see that Nike now pushed the material outward as opposed to scooping it outward or pushing it in, concaving it in. It's now a convex sidewall uh, through the entire lateral side of the shoe, which is good because that means this shoe will be more stable. But again, the fact that this became so late in the prototyping process is a little bit of a concern for me. Some of the details that we got with the updated photo leaks were that Nike went back to the drawing board with the midsole to make it more stable because they were running into uh, stability issues with that concave sidewall. But it came so late in the process, as I said, so that makes me a little concerned. Now, in the previous video on the channel, I'll put a link in the description if you want to go watch that, I talk about Nike's restructuring, how they're restructuring their running line. But I also talk about some of the chaos that Nike in general, not just running, is sort of going through right now. So there's a lot of disarray right now within Nike, all the product lines, including running. So this last minute um, change to this midsole design, while I think it's good and it resolves one of my concerns, it is a little concerning that it came so late, so last minute. It just speaks to there's just a lot of last minute changes and rethinking of things at Nike running um, a little too late in the process, which is going to result in product that maybe isn't as optimal as it can be. At the Nike On Air event on April 11th in Paris, Tony Bignell, who is the VP of Nike Footwear Innovation, gave a ton of interviews about the restructuring of the running line, but also he talked a lot about the Pegasus 41. And in those conversations and interviews, we did get some specs. So what we do know about the Pegasus 41 and how it changes over the Pegasus 40 is that it's basically gained one millimeter of stack height, which is marginal. You're, you're probably not going to feel that. There will be changes to this shoe that you feel, but we'll get to those in a moment. So we have 34 mil on the heel, 24 mil in the forefoot with the same 10 mil drop. Now that 10 mil drop is iconic to the Pegasus, just like air is to the Pegasus. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, though I would love to see an 8 mil drop or even lower in this shoe. But again, this is the everybody, everyday runner. So I just don't see Nike ever moving away from that 10 mil drop. Over the peg 40, as you can see, it's one mil. So the peg 40 was 33.23 with a 10 mil drop. Now, we didn't get any specs on weight, though there have been some specs that have come out and people that covered the event saying that the Pegasus 41 was 68 grams heavier than the uh, peg 40. So that would put the uh, US men's size nine Pegasus 41 around 274 grams or 9.7 ounces. Um, and the peg 40 was 9.4 ounces or 266 grams. Not ideal with the peg gaining weight again. With the peg 40, Nike made a big deal about how they dropped a lot of weight from the 39. And you could feel that even though the peg is still somewhat of a heavy shoe. But the fact that it's getting heavier uh, is another point of concern for me. Though, you know, 68 grams, you're not necessarily going to feel that on foot, but it's more the direction of Nike shoes getting heavier and heavier, their training shoes at least, uh, which is a little concerning. A few other details around the Peg 41 that Tony gave in all the interviews that he gave was that the fit of the Peg 41 is very similar to the Peg 40. And I think that's a great thing because I think one of the things that really was outstanding to me on the Peg 40 was the fit. I think the fit was excellent. So what Tony said was that the Peg 41 is built on the same last, it has the same midfoot support and the same lining and collar and tongue materials as the Peg 40 did. That's great to hear. He did add in another detail though that the engineered mesh upper, um, they made even lighter and more breathable. That was, again, I love the upper textile on the Peg 40, but it was a little heavy and in super hot weather, which is what I run in a lot. It wasn't the most breathable shoe. So I'm really happy to hear that. That's a really great change. Tony also spoke a lot about how the Pegasus is moving away from React Foam into Nike's React X Foam, saying that the Peg 41 is gonna be the most responsive Pegasus ever because React X Foam has 13% more energy return. Okay, that sounds good. However, 
I think the biggest concern I have for the PEG41 is the move to ReactX. And as I said, this shift to ReactX foam is my big concern for this shoe. Now, we first saw ReactX foam in this shoe last year, the Infinity Run 4, and I did not have a very favorable opinion of this shoe. In fact, I said it's an okay casual shoe that maybe you can jog in every once in a while, but it's no longer a running shoe. And one of the biggest problems with the Infinity Run 4, beyond the geometry, beyond the upper, was the ReactX foam. I really have one big problem with ReactX foam, but it has sort of two sides to it. The first one is this claim that Nike's making around ReactX foam being 43% less energy used in manufacturing. Okay, I think Nike's uh, marketing copy is getting a little creative here because the difference between React and ReactX foam is really just the manufacturing process. They're both still React foam. React foam has traditionally used compression molding, which means you have a blank uh, a material blank, you put it in a mold, put some pressure and heat on that mold, and you get a final part. React X foam is injection molded, so you have an empty mold, you inject a liquid foam in there, and it flows into the mold, gives you a final part. Now, injection molding has a few less steps than compression molding, but over the course of sourcing all the materials and actually manufacturing a complete shoe, it doesn't really save a lot of uh, material or energy. So I think Nike's being a little creative with their marketing copy there. But the bigger issue is injection molding allows you to make a more airy foam, a, a much more sort of open cell foam. And that's really what ReactX feels like. It is a much more airy, softer foam that you sink into much more. And this really is my main concern with the Pegasus platform moving to ReactX foam the zoom airbags remember the pegasus has a four foot and a heel zoom air unit now the peg has moved around uh, over the years with how that zoom air unit works in the peg 35 and 36 you had a heel to toe single unit in the peg 37 you had that giant uh, four foot unit nothing in the heel in the peg 39 40 41 you have a four foot and a heel. Now this illustration is not a peg 39, 40 or 41. That's actually the original peg trail, which is the first time that we saw this uh, four foot and heel zoom air configuration, at least in the modern Pegasus. So if you put two individual small zoom air units in the midsole in this location, in the four foot and the heel, these units in that softer, more open celled foam are ultimately probably going to have even more problems than they already do in the Pegasus traditionally. So if you take those zoom air units, which have dimensionality to them, and put them in a softer, more compressive open cell foam like React X, you're going to end up having more issues, I think. Even if there's no problem with the zoom air unit, they're functioning as they should, more people are going to feel the airbags, which some people aren't going to like because it's a very distinct feel that feels nothing like an Alpha Fly. It just has a very distinct feel. If you've ever run in a peg, you know. But also, the softer, more compressive foam is going to stress those air uh, zoom air units much more, which means the zoom air unit shifting in the cavity of the foam, which is something that it does and it causes problems, is going to be more uh, prevalent and even deflating the bag or causing some sort of defect of the bag is going to be more prevalent. So you're going to have more problems with the airbag in these shoes. So I'm really concerned with that. I'm really disappointed that Nike didn't put a full heel to toe zoom air unit in the shoe because at least that would alleviate feeling the weird uh, forefoot or the weird heel unit if you just had it under the entire foot, kind of like what the Pegasus Premium is doing. Um, I think that would have been better. That probably would have been a much more bouncy, livelier shoe, really what Nike was going for. So I don't know why Nike didn't do the full heel to toe zoom air unit in instead stuck with the forefoot and heel unit. I think it's going to be a problem. I hope I'm wrong, but I think it is going to be a major problem with this shoe. As soon as I can get a pair of Pick 41s, I will be putting them on my feet and putting as many kilometers into them as I possibly can in order to cover them on this channel because they are a shoe that I find very important for Nike and it's a shoe that I've always traditionally loved. 
Now, again, I hope that I'm wrong and I'm overthinking some of my concerns with the Zoom Air units and the softer ReactX foam, but we will see. We'll see how much wear I get out of this shoe when I finally do get a pair. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.